Continuing on with the syllabus, um, the way that the course or courses are set up in general is that we have uh, course specific learning outcomes or learning objectives and we have them saved on file at the college. And so if someone else was to teach us class, they would be given a list of these things. And these are kind of like overarching goals and they are more broad than most objectives would be and that will make more sense when I scroll down. But when you look at the course learning objectives, these are kind of broad, um, kind of wider open competencies that you would have when you finish the class. Now how a teacher chooses to accomplish these outcomes is up to the individual teacher. And if we scroll down, you'll see that I also have included module specific learning objectives. And what I've done is I've mapped, we have 12 plus an intro module, modules in ART 1200. And I have mapped all of these kind of refined specific learning objectives. And I'm saying that if we complete all of these module specific objectives as we're going to break down into like one and two week chunks, by the time we finish the semester, by doing all of these detailed things, we will have met all of these broad kind of wider goals of the entire course. You can read through that. I would recommend reading through the course learning outcomes just to make sure this is a class that you want to take, that these are the things that you're wanting to learn. I wouldn't worry too much about the module specific learning objectives until we get to each module. It's a lot to take in and you're never going to memorize all of them today. And so as we do each module, I'll remind you what the objectives for the module are. If we keep scrolling, Salt Lake Community College has a series of policies and requirements that they would like to include on every syllabi. In the past, we had to actually include it, and so that's why you see all the words on here. But recently, the college has implemented an institutional syllabus. It will have all of the up-to-date information. So I update my syllabi before the beginning of every semester, and so if three days after I uh, updated it, they changed the links to these sites here, the, the official institutional syllabus will have all of the updated information exactly how they want it presented from the college. I include it on my syllabus so that you can have kind of like a picture of all the stuff that's offered through the college and then if you want to kind of do a deeper dive you can click on that institutional syllabus. At the very bottom I've included important dates that are important to your specific semester. For example, final, final exams week, um, there are no classes on Martin Luther King Jr. Day or President's Day, and there's no classes during spring break, and so you can add those to your calendar. I firmly believe that when the college is closed for a holiday, you should not be working. It is built in as kind of a breather day, as a day for you not to have to do your coursework. Now, if you choose to, if you work you know, tons of hours and that's a day that you think that you could use to get ahead, then that's fine, but I'm never going to assign you to be working on something over any of the breaks. The visual art and design department also has its own specific department policies. You can read through this. What I want to emphasize is over here on the right hand side. Um, if you are an art student, which you don't have to be an art student to take Art 1200, it's set up so that anyone can be successful, not just artistic students. Um, but if you are an art student, you're studying something. You're studying web design, animation, multimedia, illustration, photography, graphic design, graphic communications. You're, you're studying something, right? Um, if you are studying any of the items that are listed on this page, you need to know who the full-time faculty steward is of your degree because if you have any questions, they can help you. So for example, most students who take Art 1200 are either a graphic design, a graphic communications, or an electronic publishing major. I'm putting majors in quotes because majors are only a four-year college thing. These are emphasis tracks, but the technicality doesn't matter too much. Um, but Carrie Gonzalez is the steward of those programs, and so if you have any questions, you should get to know Carrie because she's going to have all the answers about anything you want to know relating to those things. And Neil Ryland's going to have all the answers about multimedia. Rick Graham will have all the information about illustration, etc. At the very bottom of the syllabus is a semester schedule at a glance. I would print this. We're going to stick to it. You can see that I've mapped it out so that if you're budgeting your time, you would do this on Monday and Tuesday and this on Wednesday and Thursday, and then you have to submit all of these things by Saturday. Um, this is an online class, so as long as you get your work in by the yellow highlighted date, so all these things are due by January 12th, but if you do them all on Monday, then you don't have to do anything on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. 
Um, as long as you get those things in by the dates that are posted, then you're okay. So I said earlier that when we start to have critiques, you'll have to participate in the critique. So in week six, February 11th through 16th, we'll be working on module three. Um, you will be working on project three, which is a two color poster. And so you'll be working on that all week. By the end of the week, you're going to have to submit activities 3.1 through 3.4. They're all due by February 16th. However, your initial post for your critique, where you post your artwork from the previous module, so we're working on project two, you'll submit your artwork for, pro I'm sorry, we're working on project three, you'll submit your artwork for project two. That's due by Wednesday, so that it gives students Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to be able to respond to you. Last but not least, at the very bottom of the syllabus, it automatically generates a list of all of the things that are due throughout the semester. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to navigate your coursework, but I want to prepare you that this is a good place to make sure you don't miss anything. So if you're worried that you, know, you didn't get everything submitted by the due date posted, you can say, okay, well, by January 12th, I have five things I need to get done. However, this only shows you things with due dates. And so if you're like, oh, I have five things to do, and you take the syllabus quiz because you saw it on a list somewhere, You've never actually read the syllabus if you just jump and straight take the syllabus quiz. And so in order to successfully complete the course, I would recommend not using this list or the to-do feed that happens to show up on your right-hand side. Instead, navigate how I'm going to show you in the next video, and then you will not miss anything. You won't miss any lectures, any extra content, or anything that has a due date. But you can use this as a backup to make sure to double, kind of triple check that you've gotten everything turned in by the date that it's due.